This video is to sort of try to kick off a probably over, overly optimistically planned series of videos about uh, my thoughts about urban planning and zoning, um, walkability, all that kind of stuff. So a couple things to keep in mind as I start this one, I probably will not do very many of these because, you know, making a YouTube video on a small channel like this is like shouting into the void. No one's going to really watch these or be interested. Almost guaranteed, especially with the quality with which I'll be making them, which is point number two. Quality will not be high. I have essentially no equipment. I'm making this on a work computer. Hopefully I don't get in trouble for that. And um, using literally screen capture technology to do it and, you know, stuff like that. So they're, these are not going to win any YouTuber awards. Probably be, will be viewed by, you know, five times, mostly by myself as I review them and feel embarrassed about how bad I am at doing this. But uh, every once in a while, oh, the, I should also mention, um, there will probably also be random sounds in the background. I don't live in a quiet house, got some kids. Um, and uh, there'll probably be random door slammings and kids doing kid things in the background. Again, half the purpose of this is just sort of get this out of my system <clears throat> and into a recorded medium instead of irritating my friends and family to no end about these things at every Thanksgiving dinner, which by the way, happy Thanksgiving. So anyway, uh, what am I talking about and, and who am I? So I, my name is Dan. I'm not really important, but why am I obsessed with this? And I am obsessed with it. Well, um, I live in South Carolina and I have for a very long time since 2003. So most of my life has been here. Um, and, you know, uh, not perfect, but a you know, decent place to live. Um, grew up in Spartanburg County and never really thought really anything at all about urbanism, urban planning, you know, roads, transportation policy, any of this kind of stuff until I was blessed with the opportunity to live in China for three years. And they weren't all consecutive, but it was essentially, you know, three school years, so a little less than three actual calendar years. <clears throat> so I lived there and received the kind of influence you receive by living in another sort of world for an extended period of time to the point where it becomes the new normal. Okay. So I started going through the stages of culture shock there in China when I was there for those three years. Never really got over it. I never got to the point where I was like super comfortable, just loved it, you know, never really achieved anything like that. It was always, I always had something I was, you know, complaining about, um, unfortunately. But when I came back to the States permanently in 2018, I began to realize that I was going through some significant reverse culture shock. And that sort of took me on a journey of uh, exploration to figure out what is it that I now am having trouble readapting to about life in Spartanburg County, South Carolina. What, what is it about China? What did it do differently there? What is it that I'm having a problem with? And finally, I got into the endless rabbit hole of urban planning and zoning. So when I got back to the States in 2018, or, well, I'm going to go back to 2016. Uh, sorry. No, 2014. Okay. So, yes, I was in China from 2013 to 2014, in the States from 2014 to 2016, back in China from 2016 to 18, and now I'm back in the States since 2018. Very confusing. Hope that, you know, won't throw you off the confusing timeline there. 2014, I came back to America after only one year in China, and I had really enjoyed my time there. It had been very difficult, hated my job, but, uh, you know, the overall experience was, was really cool and just so different from living in South Carolina. It's like hard to even quantify. You literally feel like you're a different planet on Star Trek. Just culture different, way of doing everything different, transportation different. Just all the things you can think of that could be different were different. So I came back here and I wanted to keep doing some of the things I did. I had done a lot of bike riding in China, which I hadn't really done a lot in America before that especially not to get from point A to point B. I've done a little bit of like mountain biking in Vermont during a, like one summer of study there, but not like to get from point A to point B in a practical way like I did in China. Um, in China, I also rode the bus like just all all day, every day with the subway station and a system in, in Shanghai and the um, high-speed rail between Shanghai and other provinces nearby. I also flew a few times, but that's basically the same as uh, the American system, so not too much to notice there in terms of flying. Anyway, come back to the States after one year in 2014, and 
I want to keep doing that. I, I enjoyed the active lifestyle. So I, I tried to start walking and biking um, in Greenville and Spartanburg counties in South Carolina. And I realized very, very quickly, you know what? This is not the same experience. Okay. I also took the bus like twice one time back in 2018 and instantly realized this is a very different experience from taking the bus in China. Why is this? What is going on here? Again, that led me to the whole history of suburbanization in America. Uh, why are our cities not like China's cities? What is going on here? And um, I, I'm trying to figure out a way to split this up into little chunks because, wow, it is a mindful to get into. I've been thinking about it again since 2014. And it's still it's hard to wrap it to, to, to distill it into a brief, easily explainable thing because it has taken decades to, to diverge to this point where essentially I would say China has cities and America has very few true cities. Uh, so what happened? So I'll give you a few examples of what made me think about this kind of stuff. When I lived in a house in Greenville, South Carolina, and I would walk to my classes at a nearby college, uh, I pretty soon realized, you know, this is a pretty unpleasant experience compared to walking a comparable distance in China. What is it? Why is this? Well, the arterial Wade Hampton Boulevard, US 29 in Greenville is huge. Okay. It's one of these classic strodes, which has got, you know, four, six, sometimes at the intersections, eight, 10 lanes, including all the various turn lanes and stuff. And if you're walking along the sidewalk your typical sidewalk along that kind of strode, it is not a fun experience. It's not particularly safe, not particularly fun. If it's not congested, people will go, you know, 50, 55, 60 miles an hour, a few, a few feet from your elbow. And you didn't really have that in China. So again, you start thinking about, well, why, why do they not go so fast? Why, what's going on here? Very quickly realize, you know what? There are just a lot of lanes on this road. Why do we have some lanes on this road? And uh, started to, to, again, a, a topic for maybe another more focused video because again just wow it's a it's a lot to talk about so anyway that's that's kind of the ambition for this little theoretical potential series of youtube videos that i hope to create which probably no one will watch is i want to explain what i have observed in the past uh i guess wow is that nine years now and the comparisons i've made between the two countries from the perspective of road systems, urban planning, this kind of stuff. So I'm probably gonna leave it there because again, if I jump into a random thing about how many lanes are on arterials, um, it's gonna be boring. And um, again, there's so many rabbit holes you can go into. I'm gonna try to cut those out into to their own separate videos. Again, thanks for listening if you did, kind of doubt it. Um, and again, um, one reason I'm doing this is because I know that if I try to share this with my average friend or acquaintance or family member here in South Carolina, eyes glaze over in about 20 seconds and uh, not a pleasant experience funny even involved. So hopefully the internet can absorb the punishment a little better than my friend circle can. All right. Thanks.